All right, the Grandmaster. We're going to do some more factoring, but these are going to be a bit more challenging. Let's get right to it. 4x squared minus 14x plus 12. Okay, the first step always is to look for a GCF that we can pull out of all three terms. It would be nice if we could factor out this 4, but unfortunately we can't because 4 is not a factor of 14. But we can pull out part of it. We can factor out a 2, which would leave 2x squared minus 7x plus 6. Okay. So we factored out part of it, but unfortunately this 2 is trapped. Okay. So we have to factor this according to the previous video. And that is we need to find numbers that multiply to positive 12, but add to negative 7. I'm going to use the shortcut method. So this 2 is still there. So I had a 2x squared, so I'm going to write 2x twice, okay, not x squared, just 2x. And now I need to find numbers that multiply to 12 but add to negative 7. That would be negative 4 and negative 3, because two negatives multiply to give you a positive. Okay, but we're not quite done. We need to divide out any factors that are in common. Well. These share a factor of 2. These, well, don't share any factors other than 1. So the final answer is 2. And then in brackets, my two binomials are x minus 2 and 2x minus 3. All right. This one looks like a big mess, but notice how each term contains a y cubed. So that could be factored out. That's nice. And I have an x squared, an x, and no x is here. So this is my leading coefficient here, this negative 8. Oh, it's negative. I'd want to factor that out too. But I can't factor out the 8. Darn it. Because 8 is not a factor of 18. So we're just going to factor out the GCF, everything that's possible. So I'm going to factor out... Let's see, what can I pull out? I can't even pull out a 4. I can pull out a 2, but I'm going to pull out the negative, and I can pull out the y cubed. Okay, so that leaves 4x squared plus 9x, and this would be a minus 9. Okay, all right. We want to see if this is factorable, meaning are there numbers that multiply to negative 36 but add to positive 9? I think there are. So don't forget that negative 2y cubed, it's still there. Okay, so this is a 4x squared, so I write 4x twice. Okay. So, what multiplies to negative 36? Well, that tells me that one number is positive, one number is negative. But they have to add to positive 9. And I think I found the two numbers already. 12 and negative 3. All right. But we can't forget, we have to divide out anything that's in common. They share a 4. These guys just share a 1. So the final answer is x plus 3 with this in front. And this is still 4x minus 3. Next, x squared plus 5xy plus 6y squared. Well, step one, look for a greatest common factor. Unfortunately, there isn't one, so there's nothing we can do. Well then how do we deal with the fact that we have y's? All the y's that appeared before, we could factor them out, and then they weren't bothering us anymore. So this one we have to treat a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do for the time being is I'm going to pretend like these y's are not here. So imagine this. This is not the case, but I'm just pretending for now that I'm dealing with this. Okay? And this is easily factorable 
very easily factorable because there's no number here in front. So we can actually go right back to the uh, apprentice video. We need two numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5. So that would give me x plus 2, x plus 3. Okay, so that's the factor form of what I have in blue. But of course, if I multiply this out, I'm not going to get this because I haven't taken into account any of the y's. Well, I can fix that. Boom. Boom. There we go. And let's just see what happens. Multiply it out using FOIL. So let's say check through experimentation. So if you multiply first, so x times x gives x squared. Outside, that would be 3xy. Inside would give me 2yx, but I can keep them in alphabetical order. But then they match. And then the last would give me 6y squared. And then I can combine the two like terms in the middle. Okay, so just putting a y here at the end, well, made this factorable. There we are. Next one, oof, this one's nasty. But let's look for a GCF. Maybe that'll simplify things a bit. And it turns out I can, oh, well I can factor out a 3. I can factor out an x. And I can factor out a y. So 3x y. That's the best I can do, which will leave um, 8x squared plus 2xy minus y squared. You can think of that as a minus 1y squared. Right? So that's the best we can do. Now we want to see if we can factor this trinomial here. Now this one's, this one's nasty, I'll give you that. Okay, there's nothing more I can factor out, which means if it is factorable, I need to find two numbers that multiply to negative 8, but add to positive 2. So let's assume that it is factorable. See if we can make it work. So I write 8x twice, okay, and let's see what numbers would work, uh, negative 8, positive 2, that would be positive 4 and negative 2, those would work, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, adding them together gives positive 2, but I have these y's, so it's just like the last one, there we go. And now, of course, we divide out what's in common. Well, that would be a 4, and this would be a 2. So finally, this one's a pain. We get 2x plus y, 4x minus y. So after all that, you can multiply everything out and distributive law and combining the like terms, you should get this back again. I'm pretty confident this is correct. Number th two, determine all values of n such that the given trinomial is factorable. Okay, so I have p squared plus np plus 16. It doesn't matter that this is a p. You could also think of this as x squared plus nx plus 16. Okay, so n is just some unknown number. It could be 8, could be 7, could be 5,000, we don't know. So we want to determine what values can n actually be such that this trinomial is factorable. Because if you're to choose any random number for x, you might not be able to find two numbers that multiply to 16 but add to n. Okay, so how do we know this will work? Well, remember, we always want to find two numbers that multiply to the last, but add to the middle, whenever this leading coefficient is a 1. Well, let's look at all 
the possible numbers that would multiply to give us 16. Well, 1 times 16, negative 1 times negative 16, 2 times 8, negative 2 times negative 8, and 4 times 4, or negative 4 times, whoops, <laughs> times negative 4. Okay, so those are the only possible combinations of numbers that if I multiply them together, I get a positive 16. Well, remember, those numbers have to add to this middle one. So adding these together would give 17. This would be negative 17. This would be 10. Negative 10. 8. And negative 8. So since these are the only possibilities, these are the only values that n could be, such as to make this trinomial factorable. So if you were to pick n, let's say, is 15, or 11, or 96, okay, there's no possible combination in blue uh, that would add up to that number. So these are all plus or minus. So I can say plus or minus 8 plus or minus 10, plus or minus 17. Okay, same question. Well, let's look for a GCF, and there isn't one. So in order for this to be factorable, 6, 7, we need two numbers that multiply to 42, but add to whatever n is. So to determine all the possible values of n, such that this is factorable, we just need to look at all the possible combinations of numbers that multiply to 42, just like we did with 16. So of course there's 1 and 42, and negative 1 and negative 42. There would be 2 times 21, or negative 2 times negative 21. Okay, 42 is also divisible by 3, so we could have 3 and 14, and negative 3 and negative 14. Okay, I could have 6 and 7, or negative 6 and negative 7. Okay, those are the only possibilities. So if those were added together, that would give us all of the different possibilities that n could be, so this gives, let's see, 43, negative 43, 23, negative 23, 17, negative 17, and 13, and negative 13. So I'll make a formal list like I did with this one. All the plus and minus cases, so plus or minus 13, plus or minus 17, plus or minus 23, plus or minus 43. So in total, there are eight numbers that n could be such that this trinomial is factorable. Choose any number other than these eight and you will not be able to factor this in a million years. Number three, the area of a certain shape is represented by the expression 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. What shape could it be? Justify your answer. Now, key word here, could it be? Okay, it doesn't ask what shape must it be. Okay, as far as I'm concerned, it could be any shape we want. Okay, but we want to be able to say what shape it could be and then give a good explanation, i.e. justify our answer. Well, we've been doing a lot of factoring, so chances are maybe factoring has something to do with it. So let's see if we can actually factor this trinomial. So 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. Well, step one, always look for a GCF. 
Well, it turns out there isn't one. So this four we're stuck with. So it plays a part in deciding the two magic numbers. So four times nine is positive 36. So if it's factorable, we need numbers that multiply to 36, but add to 12. And I don't think that's too difficult to find, actually. So I write 4x twice. And I believe that is 6. And 6. Aha! But I need to divide out whatever's in common. I can divide out 2. I can also divide out 2, which gives 2x plus 3 times 2x plus 3. Hmm. Well, it just happens to work out that these two binomials are the same, which means I can write my answer like this. 2x plus 3 squared. This is very suggestive, okay? Because if these represent, let's say, the dimensions of this shape, and I have something times something, and the two somethings are the same, that suggests a square. Okay. Okay. So here the shape is a square, meaning that the length is 2x plus 3, or the height, or whatever you want to call it. And this is also 2x plus 3. And remember, we're talking about the area. Well, how do you find the area of a square? Well, it's just length times width. Well, if you multiply these two binomials together, okay, you would get this original expression back. So I would say the shape could be a square because both binomial, meaning this, factors are the same. And there we are.